Hey, uh, in this tutorial video, we're going to cover what we went over the week of September uh, 21st, uh, more specifically what we did in class during September 21st and 23rd for Engineering 1. Um, and we're going to be reproducing uh, this drawing in the AutoCAD web app. So it's an Imperial Direct document, so we're going to use our Imperial A um, template. So go ahead and get that open. Um, and as I've mentioned before, we don't want to mess with the integrity of these templates. So the first thing we're going to do is just go up to Save As, and we're going to save as. That way we get a brand new copy. Um, this document um, is going to be called Intro 1. I'm going to save this in my Engineering 1 folder in AutoCAD, and I'm going to name it Intro 1. Hit save. Okay, so now we're in our new file. We're technically not in the uh, the previous document anymore in the template. We're in the Intro 1 file. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to start. Um, yes, this is the paper space. I've kind of covered that, but we're going to need to create our drawing in the uh, model view. Um, so, how do we begin? Well, we we're going to have to select a location to which um, to set the origin. The origin of our document, x and y axis, 0, 0, the x and the 0, x and the y axis. So there's our origin right there at 0, 0. We're going to want to decide where on this drawing we want the origin to be. Um, and what point of, of this figure seems best for a... Uh, origin. So I'm going to kind of say this point right here, this bottom left point of this figure could be a great spot for the origin. So I'm going to set that origin to be there. So I'm going to start from this point. I'm going to move down this um, down the uh, figure here and I'm going to draw in all these visible lines we see using the dimensions that are listed here. Okay. In the model view we have the drawing tab here at the bottom. We want to create a line. You're going to see how in the command line now it says line specify first point. Well, I want the first point to be 0, comma, 0, 0, comma, 0 on the uh, x and y axis. We'll hit enter, and that's where it starts our line. I'm going to align my next point so that I get the green, um, the green polar, slap, uh, polar snap line that comes up. And we're going to want it to be at zero degrees. So you can see how this changes every 90 degree increment. 90 degrees, 180, and 270 degrees. Polar snap. We're going to set it to zero. And we're going to want to set that the dimension here is uh, a, a distance of three inches. We're going to set that to three inches there. Um, I'm going to hit escape, stop drawing. And then you're going to see that our next line here, so I'm at this point now, is going to be two inches in a 90 degree direction. We'll hit line. We're going to hover over the endpoint here and we're going to, um, so we get that snap on that endpoint, that's why it's a green square. We're going to click that endpoint and then what we're going to do, we're going to move our cursor so that it's 9 degrees up. We get that polar snap. We're going to hit 2 so it changes that dynamic input box there to 2 and we're going to hit enter and then it's 2 inches long. I'm going to kind of repeat this. I'm going to do the one, the top there, and I get that. Okay. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to go back to here. So I've drawn this line here, this line here, and this line here. Okay. From here to here is 0.75. Um, I know that, um, I know this is another 0.75. Um, I'm going to draw this line at 1.5. That way I can move to this midpoint here and get that, uh, angled line there as well. So what I'm going to do, I'll take my line, hover here, click, I'll come down, so it's 90 degrees there, I'll type 1.5, good, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to hover over this end point here, I get that snap, I'm going to hover my mouse up, I'm not clicking, but now I get two polar snap lines. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to click there, so then I, I'll get that line there, and then I'm going to come down and snap back to the end. Okay, 
we want to make sure that midpoint is turned on for our snaps. So I'm coming up here to the settings. We have object snap. We want to make sure midpoint is turned on. That way I could snap to the midpoint. So when I'm drawing this line here from this point here, I'm going to look for where that midpoint is. There it is. Click and click. Escape to stop drawing. Good. All right. Only thing that's left now is uh, creating that uh, circle. Uh, right here. So how are we going to do that? So we know the diameter is 1.5. I know it's two inches away from the uh, origin here uh, in the 90 degree direction. So we're going to come down to our drawing menu here. We're going to hit circle. We're going to hover over the end point here so I get that snap. I'm going to pitch my um, mouse up. I get that trailing extension line. So it says an extension and then it gives you the distance. So if that trailing line shows you away from where you were holding the snap point to. So I technically, I don't want it at 1.719 seconds, hit 2. And then you can see how in the command bar you see 2 down there and they won't hit enter. So it's going to say, okay, I want it 2 inches away. That's where the center point is. At which point now, if I look at the command bar, it says circle, specify radius of circle or you have the option to switch to the diameter, so I know that the diameter is 1.5, so 0.75 is the radius. We'll hit that for the radius of the circle. There we go. Good. So all the visible lines are now drawn. What do we need to do next? Before we dimension and before we put in our center lines, we're going to want to center our drawing on our paper space. So we'll go into our paper space. You're going to see that it's not in the center. Well, there's the origin, and the origin is technically in the center of this viewport. The viewport, again, is that rectangle there. So we're going to need to pan our viewport so that the center of the drawing is in the center of the page. So we activate the viewport by double-clicking inside this viewport. It becomes highlighted and activated, and now we can pan our drawing by holding down the wheel of the mouse and then we'll drop it there and then to deactivate the viewport we will double click in the gray so technically um, once the viewport was activated we can pan right and that's what we did but technically you can zoom in and out we don't want to zoom in and out because it's going to change the scale we want to set the scale to a number we like so the scale down here by default right now is set to one to one and then what the scale is is the scale of the drawing the size relative to real life so a one-to-one -one scale, one divided by one is 100% full size. If the scale is one to two, one divided by two is one half, 50% half size. So if a line was six inches long, if the scale was one to two, it technically would be three inches long on the sheet of paper when it's printed out. So we can set the scale for our drawing so it fits. Again, this is 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. We want to pick a size of a drawing that fits the piece of paper best. Changing the scale is easy. We are going to select the viewport here. We're going to go to properties. Um, and we're going while this viewport is selected, so we click on the edge of the line to select the viewport. Again, we, all we did was um, click the edge of the line here. And the viewport comes selected. We see viewport scale here. It's one to one. So we have a couple options here. We can set it to one to two. You can see that the view gets smaller, one to four, and so on. Um, we can go larger, two to one. So two to one looks like it could fit. If we pan it down a little bit, um, four to one is way too big. Uh, but you know, a one to one's fine. We'll just leave it at one to one. That sounds good. So that's how we set our scale. We always want to set the scale first before we dimension and before we um, put any center lines and hidden lines in. Okay, great. We know that a one-to-one -one scale fits best for this. So let's go back into our model view and dimension and do center lines. Before we do that, we need to set the scale for our dimension style. So yours may be defaulted to engineering ENG01201. That's the dim, dim style or dimension style. And I put these in here by default for you. And they have different scales in these different styles. So if we set the, as an example, if we set the paper scale, 
the scale in our paper pay per view to one to four, we need to make sure engineering one to four is selected in our dimension style. If we set our scale to two to one, we need to make sure it is engineering two to one as our dimension style. In our cases, we set it to one to one. We're going to want to make sure this is engineering one to one in our dim style. Good. Now we can go ahead and dimension an annotate tab dimension hovering over the line here you get the option for dimension we can click and then click the drop in addition we can also select points to dimension so if I wanted to select this point here to this point to dimension to I can do that as well and we're going to dimension our drawing so that uh, it looks like the drawing that I have there on canvas Okay, and the diameter by just hovering over the line of the circle, clicking, and then dropping. Well, one thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to dimension this two inches from the origin to the center. I'm going to make sure that it touches the um, center line instead of the center of the circle, because if you dimension this from this point to here, you're going to notice that that extension line is going to feed into the drawing. And ideally, I don't want that to happen. I'd rather dimension it to the center line. So I'm going to wait to do center lines first. OK, how do we do center lines? Easy. I'm going to switch to layers. And I have built in a layer there called center lines. We've been drawing in the zero layer, which is default. We're going to dimension in center lines. And the way the center lines is set up, the line type in center lines is a center. So in other words, every line we draw in this um, layer looks like a center line. But hey, why did in this line here look like a center line? So what happens is um, if a line is too short to fit the scale of the center line, so in other words, if I draw a line like this, it doesn't look like a center line. It's too small for it to fit the scale. We're going to have to change the line type scale of the line individually. Okay, let's draw our center lines in. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see what's going to happen. Okay, we're just drawing regular lines here. I'm going to hover over the edge of the circle here so the snap point for the center of the circle shows up. Then I can go to the center of the circle. And then I'm going to pan over to get that polar snap line there. And then I get to the intersection point. What I want to do is come a little bit past it before I click because the center lines feed off the edge of the... Uh, figure and we're going to click. I'm going to come across here, get that snap point, come a little bit past, click, escape to stop drawing. I'm going to do the other one, pan down, I get the snap point for the intersection. I'm not having clicked yet, I'm going to go a little bit past and then I'm going to click. Um, snap point there, a little bit past and then click. Um, if we were in the classroom and using the desktop version of AutoCAD, this would be a little bit different, but since we're using the web app, we kind of have to improvise. Escape to stop drawing. Okay, we have our center lines, but they don't look like center lines. We're going to need to scale them. So I'm going to make sure that they're selected. We'll select one. I'll hold shift to select the other line. So I have multiple lines selected now. And what we're going to need to do is go to properties. So while these lines are selected, we can change the properties of the lines. Right now, the line type scale is one. 100% full size. If we make it smaller, let's say 50%. So I'm going to take this, delete it, 0.5, half, or 50%, enter. The scale comes down on the line. Hey, look, now it looks like a center line. That works. And you can do, generally, in most cases, it's going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 0 0.25. Um, and one of those we're going to end up, work, end up working depending on how long the line is. 0.5 here looks great. Escape to deselect. And now what we're going to do, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Pan up. Okay, what are we going to do? Finish up by putting that last dimension in. Go back to layers. Set it to zero. Annotate. Dimension. That origin point. Take it to here. The dimension two, and I don't want an angular dimension. I want it in line. I'm going to bring my mouse up to there so I get that two. I drop it there. Perfect. Looks good. Our drawing looks done now. 
We're going to go back into views, into our paper view. There's our drawing, looks good. Before we finish, we're going to want to rename this instead of drawing title. I want to call it intro one. Remember, always capitalized. Check to get out of that. Good. Intro one. Okay. Time to plot. Before I plot, make sure I save. Save button up at the top. Let it save. Okay, it's saved. Plot to PDF button right there up at the top right. We'll click that. What to print, current layout, good. Scale is set to one-to-one, -one. that's what we set, good. The plot style is monochrome, I defaulted everything to monochrome, so it's gonna change all lines to black and white. So I've set the uh, center lines to blue, um, and head lines to purple, just so we can see it easier in our drawings, but they're gonna default to black and white. Everything's gonna come out black on the, uh, when we plot the PDF. Good, wait, plot. And again, remember I mentioned um, I've offsetted this uh, total title block to the top right corner to overcompensate for the way the printer, uh, the way the computer interprets the PDF. We'll download the PDF. Ends up in your downloads folder, and all I'm going to do is bring it over here, and then I will take a look at it. Everything looks good here. It's centered. Yep. That, see, I've overcompensated. It looks centered here, but actually in AutoCAD, I have it off-centered because I know that these Windows computers are not going to plot out the PDF correctly, so I've overcompensated for it. But here's your finalized PDF. Everything looks good. This is what you send to me on Canvas, this PDF. Save it for your record. That's what you submit. And that's it for this tutorial.